Okay, what we've got for you today is a uh, Tenma 72-3055. It's a uh, relatively new uh, uh, scope in terms of age compared to the uh, to the more vintage units I've, I've been selling. Um, I'm not sure of the exact time, but I'm going to say early 90s vintage. Um, and it's a 20 megahertz scope. Um, it's in very good condition. Front panel is immaculate. Uh, all the knobs and switches are uh, are in perfect order. Everything seems to be working 100%. Uh, the trace is bright and clear. Um, it's actually far better than uh, than what's appearing on this uh, inexpensive video, and I'm getting a lot of. Um, a lot of reflection in here so forgive me on that but it, you can tell it looking at the trace it's clear and it's crisp there's a uh, a lot of intensity left in the unit okay, got nice control over it we have uh, good focus control right about there the trigger on the scope works quite well. We are currently in the auto position which means that um, if I am not triggering then I'll see free running. There's the trigger. Free running on to the right, back to center, to the left, back to center. Okay, then we can go to normal. We're triggered right now. If I go to the left we get no, uh, no trace till we trigger again. We're back to center, and then we go to the right. So that's, uh, that's the way the normal works. There's also a TV vertical and TV horizontal position, uh, none of which probably most of you would be using these days. Um, channel 1, channel 2, line and external source for the triggers. Uh, we currently are on channel 1. We could go to channel 2. Since both channels are tied together right now, it really makes no difference. Um, the switches are uh, are very smooth, easy to enter uh, to to activate. The uh, detents on them are very uh, uh, very soft. It's uh, it's not a harsh switch at all. In fact, the horizontal you almost don't feel it. It's just something to get used to. Um, but they work very smoothly. A nice crisp transition. We have uh, channel 1, channel 2, dual mode, additive mode. Kind of common. Uh, we can, well, if I ground out the signal while I'm on channel 1, let's go to channel 2. There we go. Channel 1's grounded at this point. Not grounded. AC, DC, well, you know, I can see a difference there. Go back to channel one, we can ground channel two, and you see that's operating just as well. Um, position controls nice and smooth. We can uh, position both of these right over top of each other, and they basically just disappear, become one, which is what you'd want. Um, We have a times 10 uh, horizontal sweep control. We pull the uh, nodule out there, the, the knob, and our horizontal now is 10 times larger than it was, and then we go back again. So as you can see, the scope is in very nice shape. Um, it's a black, flat um, <coughs> case, and uh, Nice condition. We have some some Mars. Somebody uh, pushed something over the top of it and marred the paint, but it's not so much uh, scratched down to the metal, but it's a it's a scratch in the finish called a mar. Um, we can take a look at the side. Very good shape. Very good shape on the left side as well. Nice and shiny, working stand. 
I'm going to turn off the overhead lights so we get less reflection and we'll take a look at some of the signals. All right, so now uh, <clears throat> it's easier for us to see the signals. Let's go ahead and uh, <clears throat> All right. Nice fluid movement of the controls. We have a um, uh, uh, trace rotation works on this just fine. I've got it adjusted. I don't really wish to wish to uh, maladjust it at this point. Um, let's go ahead and start to take this thing through some tests. Okay, we have the Tenma hooked up to our heat kick calibrator. And the calibrator is putting in a 0.1 uh, second uh, square wave cycle. So uh, one full cycle of square wave on the screen is, is a tenth of a second. And right now we are connected up to uh, the 0.1 uh, second per division sweep rate. So essentially we should see one cycle in every division. But our phosphor is too slow and we can't really make out the square wave easily on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use my times 10 magnification for the sweep. I'm going to pull the switch out. And what I should be able to see now is I have one cycle in 10 divisions. We're going to adjust our positioning here so that we can see that easier. All right, so now we have to look carefully. But what we can see, hopefully, is we can see that we start our pulse on the left, we break in the middle of the screen, and we run off to the right, and we have one cycle in 10 divisions. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my uh, times 10 off. And we're going to change our horizontal setting from 0.1 seconds per division to 50 milliseconds per division. Now at this point, 50 milliseconds per division, I should be able to, um, uh, in 10 divisions, that would be 500 milliseconds. I am running in with a 100 millisecond cycle rate, period period of 100 milliseconds. So that means there's five of these should be able to be displayed in 10 divisions. And if I uh, carefully uh, count them, I should be able to see one, two, three, four, five. It's difficult. Let's go ahead and go to 20 milliseconds per division. 20 milliseconds per division, I should see two full cycles on the screen. One, two. At 10, I should be able to get one on the screen. Here we go. One full cycle in 10 divisions. Okay, we're going to kick ourselves up to, from our calibrator, we're going to change our input signal to 10 millisecond uh, cycle rate. So now we have 10 milliseconds for every cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and um, we're still on the scope at uh, 10 milliseconds per division, so we should see one cycle for every every division and with a slight adjustment we can make that clear here we go um, there's one cycle in one division and there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of these cycles across the screen which it should be all right we're going to go ahead and turn our sweep rate to 5 milliseconds per division 
and we should now be able to see five full cycles across the screen. Here's one, two, three, four, five. It's good. If we go to uh, two milliseconds per division, I, th I think we're at. Yes. We're on the two millisecond per division area. I want to give you some light, but I. But uh, I don't want to wash off the screen, so. All right, right now I'm coming in with a 10 millisecond per division pulse. I've got uh, um, 2 millisecond uh, sweep rate, so it should be showing two pulses across the screen um, in 10 divisions here. So I see 1, 2. There we go. If I go to 1 millisecond per division, I now get one trace across 10 divisions. And at this point, we're ready to kick up our uh, calibrator another decade. Uh, calibrator right now says um, Calibrator is telling me we are at one millisecond per division. The scope is on one millisecond per division, so we see we see one cycle in every division on the screen. And that's the case. If I go to 0.5 milliseconds per division, I get the characteristic five pulses across the screen. If I go to 2 milliseconds per division, I get two pulses across the screen. If I go to 0.1 millisecond per division, I get uh, one trace in 10 divisions. So far, perfect. I now go to uh, 0.1 millisecond per division rate out of my calibrator. I am at the 0.1 millisecond per division rate on the scope, so I should see one cycle in every division. And if you look carefully, you can see the divisions maybe, and you can see the cycle as well. All right, now I go to 50 microseconds per division. I get the characteristic five pulses. 20 microseconds per division, I get two pulses. 10 microseconds, I get one across the screen. Exactly what we'd expect. If I go up one more decade, I am now at uh, 10 microseconds uh, per division on both scope and calibrator, and I see that I have um, I have one cycle in every division again. If I go to five microseconds uh, per division, I, I get the five pulses across the screen. Two microseconds, uh, I get two pulses across the screen, and then I go to one. One microsecond per division. In ten divisions, I've got one cycle, which is what I'd expect, because I'm putting in a ten microsecond uh, cycle rate, period. Now I go up another decade on my calibrator, and I see that I have one full cycle in every division because I am at one microsecond on both scope and calibrator. And if I go to 0.5 uh, microseconds per division, I get the characteristic five pulses. If I go to 0.2, I get just a slight adjustment here so we can see it. Right there. We get the two um, pulses across 10 divisions. And if I go to um, another step and I am on the XY coordinate now. And with a square wave coming in on both channels, uh, Instead of getting a lobe as a Lissajou pattern, I get a square. Essentially a square. I can, uh, I'm can. i in the XY, XY position, and um, I can change my positioning here to center it. So now you know that we have a working, working uh, XY capability. Turn my uh, intensity down a bit so we don't burn the phosphor. 
and uh, so we know our uh, XY is working. We're getting a listed you pattern. We've now uh, stepped through every uh, every step of the horizontal range and confirmed that it was reading accurately. So you are getting you've got a good time base here on this scope. So now we're going to go and check the um, uh, the voltages on the scope, and uh, if those are correct. Uh, Time base and voltage would be accurate, and we should be in good shape. And we'll, we'll do a little test on that too. 